Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Business Connected Digital seri Series webinar. My name is Carla Freire, and I'm a Program Manager at Enterprise Nation, and I'm very happy to welcome you today. For those of you joining an Enterprise Nation webinar for the first time, we're a vibrant community of small businesses and business advisors that exist to shortcut your route to trusted business support. Today's session is part of Business Connected. We have partnered with Vodafone Business to equip 800,000 small businesses over the next three years with different digital skills. The program is also supported by our digital partners, JP Morgan, Sage, and Builder AI. For more information, visit the Business Connected hub, and I will put the link into the chat box. The Business Connected Digital Series is designed to help business owners boost their online and digital skills. So if you have any questions throughout the session, please post them in the Q&A function, and we will answer them at the end. It will also be great if everyone could share in the chat where you are tuning in from today and a little introduction to your business. Today's webinar will be recorded and we will send a follow-up email to you later today with that recording and further resources. But going into today's session, we're now joined by our first speaker, Catherine McManus. She's a small business marketing consultant, draws on 28 years of marketing and business development experience and her recent experience as the founder of a fashion startup. She will share a, ra a range of online tools that can enhance your marketing efforts, and you will be able to discover how to leverage these tools to maximize your reach, engage your target audience, and generate impactful results without breaking the bank. That's all from my side, and I will leave Katrin the virtual stage now. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me and see me properly, and more importantly, the presentation. Um, I'm Catherine, founder of Small Business Marketing Consultant, and I help small business owners um, optimize their marketing so that they can spend time on other strategic matters. Um, just a quick thanks to Enterprise Nation for uh, um, allowing me to come on today and to share some, some uh, details with you and some, some um, hopefully some, some interesting strategies. Um, I have a lot to share, so I'm just going to go on ahead, uh, quickly introduce myself. I have 28 years worth of experience across big companies and small multinationals like Nestle, SMEs, um, like a financial planning organization in Singapore, startups like my own fashion startup, uh, and everything in between. Um, I pride myself on um, offering powerful integrated marketing solutions, uh, which include analysis strategy and implementation. So I see myself as a bit of a marketing one-stop shop. Um, I don't focus on any particular area. I help with all areas, which means um, that I won't just offer one particular skill like um, social media management or whatever. I'll look at everything for you and make sure that everything works in sync on brand and together as well as it can do. Um, it also means that you might hire me for something like search engine optimization, and I might come to you with other ideas um, where I think you could grow or other ideas to add value to your brand. So I'm, I'm very much a generalist. Uh, I'm not a specialist. Um, so I can't tell you about the, the most up to date algorithms in Twitter or whatever, but I can look for ideas across the board for you and make sure everything's working as well as it can and also go for um, low hanging fruit and areas where you might not be optimized right now where I can help you optimize. Um, I am proud to have been called a fairy godmother to small businesses, which was a lovely thing that one of my clients said, uh, and also a bloodhound, which is slightly different in terms of an image, uh, but a bloodhound in terms of sniffing out the best opportunities for my client boys, having my um, nose and ears open uh, for these opportunities. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, in terms of today, I am going to take you through a few areas. Uh, one that you might not have thought that I would take you through. You might have thought that uh, you might be expecting me to take you straight through to tactics and some tactics that you could be using um, to help your business. I will be covering that towards the end of the session. Um, I very much want to bring you back to the core of marketing, uh, which is anal analysis and strategy and basically making sure that you've got the right product and service at the beginning, right from the beginning and also all the way through, obviously, that you keep thinking about these things. I will also be taking you through uh, easy to use online tools that will make your life a lot easier. Um, obviously, I'll be showcasing some. There are so many. I'll be showcasing the ones that I use the most. Um, and I recommend to others, but obviously, you know, you could be speaking to somebody else who might be um, offering other tools. Um, and then I will also cover five cost effective marketing tactics that you can consider. 
Uh, wise words from a management guru, uh, Peter Drucker, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. I thoroughly believe in measurement and I thoroughly believe in setting goals and then analyzing and measuring and also looking behind you historically at what has worked, what hasn't worked, uh, what is working, what isn't working today in order to plan for the future. I think this is really, really important. Um, at Nestle, I worked at Nestle in my 20s, um, one of the biggest companies in the world, very, very hot on marketing. Um, we used to do brand plans once a year um, and those brand plans were intensive and extensive. Uh, for anyone who's worked in a big company, uh, like a fast moving consumer goods company, you will understand the, um, just the sheer amount of data that you have available to you. Um, you wouldn't believe it if you, can, you know, if you, if you hadn't seen it for yourself, but, but literally you can measure everything and anything across the brand, across every single product, every single um, SKU of the brand, every single flavor um, at a four week level, 12 week level, you know, uh, one year level, it's just absolutely intense. So we used to do all of that analysis, we used to put it all together, and then uh, we used to create the strategy for the brand ongoing for that year ongoing. So. I'm not saying that you need to do that at that level. I'm just saying that it's important for you um, to be looking at these things um, either once a year or several times a year, whatever works for you. But you need to be looking at these things just to stay on top of uh, what's important. Um, you don't want to be a Kodak or you don't want to be a Blockbusters, basically. You don't want to lose sight of what's going on and then you know be one big brand one minute and uh, nobody the next, if you see what I mean. So um, some of the areas we're gonna cover in terms of analysis, and again, it will be very brief, but just to remind you of some, some core principles, who, what, where, why, how, um, other people might describe it as, you know, um, who are, who's your audience, um, the four Ps or the seven Ps of marketing, those types of things. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna throw some questions at you that you might need to think about. Um, just keeping track of your environment, competitors, trends, ways that you can do that, um, and also brand performance, how you can keep sight of your brand performance, your website performance, those types of things. So just some questions really to, to keep in your mind. Um, it's very tempting and easy as a business owner to think that just because you like it, your customers will like it, but ultimately you might not be your customer. So you have to be, and, and the competitive environment might be very intense. So um, just some questions that it might be worth you asking yourself and honestly answering um, things like who, what are we? Who do we, you know, what do we stand for? Who are we serving? Um, what audiences do we have? What are their pain points? How can we serve their pain points? What are their needs? What are their wants? What are our key messages? Um, what makes us different? Why would somebody buy from us rather than a comp competitor? Um, where can people buy from us? Can we make ourselves more available uh, to the target audiences? Um, just a few questions really that it's worth you being able to answer. Um, if you would like um, me to email you my seven key steps of marketing strategy, then please um, email me at info at smallbusinessmarketingconsultant.co.uk and I will do that. Hopefully somebody is putting that in the chat box now so that you can email me. Um, that will go into a little bit more detail and very much easy speak. I'm not talking um, marketing degree language or anything that's not easy to understand, just very easy concepts for you to understand in terms of um, making that product or service uh, more competitive in its environment. Um, so a couple of other things that you could be doing, looking at trends um, and signing up to Google Trends and Alerts. So. An example of this, Google Alerts, um, a few days ago, I signed one of my, well, I basically um, made an alert on Google for one of my clients, a uh, um, hairdressing client up north. Uh, we had just done, or we have been doing this week, a um, huge campaign uh, in line with the Barbie film release on Friday. And it's been really, the PR campaign has been really well received, really well picked up. Um, and I created an alert for the name of the client and um, within it was 24 hours um, they came back to me with five or six local media that had picked up that story so I was able to see um, where that story had gone where my press release had got to um, so really really useful you can basically put an alert for your personal name uh, your brand name your competitor's name um, keywords that are important to you um, really useful service uh, just be aware that obviously some some words might 
you know, Google might spam you on some words if they're very common words. So for instance, me putting in small business marketing consultant because it's quite generic. I get a lot of, I get a lot of uh, emails from, from Google about that. So just be aware of, you know, how often you want these um, emails to be hitting your, your email, but very, very useful service. Google Trends similarly is a lot of fun. If you haven't already looked at Google Trends, it tells you what's trending right now. When I had a look um, a few days ago, it was bariatric surgery. <laughs> there must be some um, famous person that's having that done and everyone else wants to know about it. Um, but it was also on the 14th of July. And so everyone's asking about the 14th of July, what made 14th of July um, important. Um, but you can literally search for trends. What, what are people uh, looking for across various locations? Um, you can also, I think, sign up to Google Trends or Google Service, and they'll they'll email you some in, some in information on what's trending, uh, what's going on. Um, so that is, yeah, that's a really useful um, tool. Um, it's great to keep track of what's going on in the media as well, local, national, international, and industry media. Gone are the days where you had to kind of go and buy a whole load of magazines uh, to get access to this. By the way. Uh, which is what um, we used to have to do years and years ago. Um, there are business libraries available everywhere that have hard copies of some of these publications. Um, if you happen to be in London, I very much recommend the Small Business Research and Enterprise Centre, which is close to Bank. It's amazing. It does some incredible seminars. It's got incredible amounts of information. Uh, if you join, it also allows you to access some research um, online so you don't have to go to the library. And some of these research reports would normally cost you a lot of money and only be available for that reason to bigger brands. Um, but you can have access to these. So market trends, market research, um, figures, stats, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's also the Business uh, and IP Centre National Network. Um, I think the main one in London and King's Cross, I've been a couple of times, again, they do events and they've got quite a lot of information there, especially if you're looking at things like copywriting, trademarking, that kind of thing. Um, but they've also got a national network that you can join up to. Um, there are also media readers such as Redly, which for the very small price of uh, 9.99 a month, but I think it's also free for a month. That's what it says here. You can have access to all the major media and literally just read a whole load of magazines for 9.99 a month. So it's a really, really useful service to have. I would also recommend that you sign up to the likes of Marketing Week uh, for updates on, on trends and what's going on in the world. Um, through signing up to Marketing Week, I was able to share with a restaurant client um, a few months ago stats about the cost of living crisis and how that was affecting food businesses, takeaway businesses, restaurants, that kind of thing. Uh, and at the time, it was useful to me to share that with them because um, even though they might not think they were doing all that well in terms of their ideal goals and their ideal targets, um, because of the environment that we're in, obviously those ideal goals and targets aren't achievable unless, well, even with you know certain amounts of, of budget put behind it, it, it would still be quite challenging. They were doing very well compared to the, the norm, compared to a whole load of other businesses. I mean, a whole load of other businesses were closing down, but the, 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 the decrease, the decline in sales was, was uh, noteworthy and it was shared by Marketing Week. So it's a real, it, it really helps in terms of understanding what's going on in the world, how other people are doing and how, how you're doing in comparison. Um, another resource is Exploding Topics. Um, if you just go and have a little look at that online, it's an online tool uh, that tells you about um, topics that are trending, that are exploding. Um, there is a free version of this and there's also a paid version. The free version means that it comes into your own box and tells you about some exploding topics, but doesn't tell you about all the exploding topics because obviously they need to make some money. Um, so the uh, exploding, if, if you pay, obviously it gives you all of them. Um, so that's really helpful in terms of what's going on. Um, and you can have a look at what's going on, not just in your industry, but generally what, what people are excited about, what's trending, what's, go what's going on out there. Um, in terms of... Um, competitors it's important for you to know obviously who you're up against um, what they're offering um, how they look etc um, so I would recommend that you have a look at their online footprint maybe put the competitor's name into google see what comes up see what people have written about them see where they've been featured in the press or in blogs um, have a look at their reviews but don't just look at reviews um, as in the the latest ones have a search for the good ones and the not so good ones. Have a look at the one stars. 
um, why have people put one star? Why have people put two stars? Is there something that's lacking in that in that service or in that product that you can you can uh, launch or you can add? Um, you know, can you can you fill that gap? Um, doing competitor analysis is uh, important as well because it, it it throws up things. It throws things up. So to give you an idea, um, recently I've started working with a client. Um, it's, it, I think he might be described as a, a musical production, an online music production client. Um, and one of the people that he had asked for a quote from was a, a Google ads agency. And so what they would have potentially done is just promoted what he's already got. So his current website and his current service. What I've done because I look at things across the board and I don't focus in on just one service and I tend to look at the core product and core service and things like the website and the user journey and all these great things uh, before even starting to kind of want to promote it. Um, because if you've got, you know, if you've got a bad website or a poorly communicated service, then it, it can be a leaky bucket in terms of, you know, you're sending people to a website that's not converting properly. So it's sometimes good to go back to the original website, core product or service offering, et cetera. Um, and we were able to, I was able to see and chat through with him that um, even though he, he's successful, um, he could be more successful because um, his design is somewhat lacking versus his competitors. So his competitors look a little bit more slick on the design side of things, whereas um, his is a little bit more basic and looks a bit more uh, DIY, if you see what I mean. So in terms of giving across that professional, um, that professional, well, um, profile, um, you know, it's, it would be a good thing for him to up his game in terms of the uh, design of his products, the design of his website and the customer journey on his website. So um, these are just things it's worth doing. If I hadn't done that, he would just be plugging his website and there would be, you know, that th there are improvements to be made there for him. So in terms of brand performance, um, the Goliath of website analytics is Google Analytics. Um, there has been a recent change on Google Analytics from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics, Analytics 4. So that was literally done in July. So if you are not aware of that, uh, please look into that. Please make sure that you are hooked up to Google Analytics 4 uh, because Universal Analytics, they said that they would stop tracking uh, websites um, as of uh, a date in early July. Um, Google Analytics is one of those things that it surprises me small business owners don't always know about or haven't always hooked their websites up to um, and it leaves you open to uh, well it leaves you open to not knowing what's going on and what's working and what's not working um, Google Analytics is super powerful in terms of telling you about your traffic where your traffic is coming from who your website users are how they interact with your website and that, that's really the core of what you need to know in order to build on that what's working what's not working what you need to do next um, so just a couple of screens for those people who aren't familiar this is just uh, an initial screen to show you that you can see users new users event count conversions that type of thing um, by the way in all of these uh, charts I'm going to be yellowing out some of my client names so I don't want to be sharing their data um, but you get the general drift of what these uh, what this page looks like what Google Analytics looks like this is one of my favorite parts of Google Analytics. If you look at the section there on the left, um, basically you can see that for this particular business, organic search is doing super well and organic social is bringing a lot less traffic. Um, now, if you didn't know this, you would be tempted to spend a whole load of money because that's what you know people are talking about social media all the time and what you can say social media. You could be spending a whole load of money and energy and effort and time in social media when ultimately maybe search engine optimization is the way forward for you or is the quicker win for you. Um, and I'm not saying social media is not a good thing. I'm gonna talk about that later. It's got huge opportunities and for some businesses, it works better than for others. Um, but you really need to be aware as a business owner of where your traffic is coming from and um, where you can get more of that great traffic uh, from your target audience and what's you know where you need to be placing your efforts. Um, here on this uh, on this right hand side, it talks about page titles. Here you can see where people are coming, where people are spending time, um, how well some of your pages are doing, and not all of that information on this particular screen, but you'll be able to see on Google Analytics. So you can really see what's working, what's not, what you need, to, what more content you need to pump out um, uh, on certain themes and, and concepts, etc. And also what pages might need improving. There might be a, a particular page 
that's a key page to you, but people are not spending enough time on it and you need to figure out why. Um, Google Search Console is like Google Analytics partner in crime. And again, some people know about Google Analytics, but don't seem to know about Google Search Console. It is super important and it does, it performs another task that is really important for you to know about. So Google Search Console is good for checking technical issues on your website. It's good for troubleshooting, things like crawling, indexing, ranking. And you can monitor the performance um, across search engines of your keywords. And that's one thing I particularly like because obviously um, you can make sure that you are being seen by Google and shown to others for certain keywords. And you can work on that. If you're not currently being shown by Google for certain keywords, you, you can work on that. Or if you are, you can obviously but you want to go higher up the, the, the rank on page two or higher, higher up the rank on page one, then you can see how your key word or key phrase is working for you right now and then put more energy behind it so that you go up the ranks, if you see what I mean. So it's, it's really powerful. Um, so here again, just a couple of screens. This is the overview screen here and you can see, um, depending on where I am on your screen, there's Google search uh, insights, search, sorry, search console insights, uh, you can see some performance there and some indexing and the indexing side of things is really important because you might have put out there, you might have created, you know, you might be spending time creating content that you think is amazing. Um, but for whatever reason, Google doesn't like it and hasn't crawled it, hasn't indexed it, isn't ranking, isn't showing it to people. This is where you're going to find out about that. Um, so you need to be creating that great content, but you also need to be, you also need to just double check that Google is showing it. Otherwise, there's no point to that activity. So here you can see about search queries. So under the performance tab, you can see queries, uh, your top queries. So here, for instance, we're looking at the last six months, the queries for this, um, for a hairdressing clients. And I'm just gonna point your, your, your attention to a couple of things. So here, um, one of the stylists wrote a blog post about cancerous moles. And as a, as a business owner, you might not be too sure what to write about. You might just want to write some nice things that are interesting to your clients. But ultimately, content is also about bringing people to your website, bringing your target audience to your website and getting them to convert. That's the second part. It's not just about bringing them. It's about getting them to convert, getting them to spend money with you. So here, the cancerous mole, for whatever reason, uh, cancerous moles um, blog post was picked up by Google in, a, in quite an incredible way. And here we can see that it got 44,000 impressions. And um, the problem with that is that it inflates your traffic. You think you're doing really well, but actually when you dig a little deeper, you're doing really well on a word that doesn't, doesn't really, isn't gonna bring you any, anything. It's, um, you know, it's a blog post that is possibly being seen by a lot of people across the UK who are not based in your city or town, who are not gonna come to your local uh, destination. Um, so it's a bit useless. It's kind of of interest, but it's not gonna bring you any sales. However, what we're working on at the moment is hairdressers Lancaster are, is a, a search word that people would use. So hairdressers Lancaster, Lancaster hairdressers, hair salon in Lancaster, all these things people will be putting into Google in order to find that service. So those are the types of keywords that we would rather go after because if we can get onto page one of Google, which we are now, um, then it means more traffic and more targeted traffic that will convert. Social media analytics are the last thing. And again, I'm gonna go through this really quickly. A lot of people are on Instagram. So if you don't know where to look on Instagram, if you look at, and, and these, all of these facts um, or accounts are not related again, so that I'm not sharing information, um, but you know, Park's Edge here is not related to these two here, for instance. So, but it just gives you an idea of where to go and have a look. So Instagram, you can go and have a look at professional dashboard. Um, then have a look at account insights, see all, and then you can have an overview of what's going on. Um, you can look at last 30 days, you can look at last seven days, you can look at last 90 days, uh, you can look at all the accounts that you've reached, how well you're doing, are you growing, are you declining, uh, you can have a look at your target audience, or actually it's not your target audience, you, you're actually looking at your follower profile, sorry. Um, so, you know, are your, are your follow, is your follower profile in line with what you want it to be? Are you attracting your target audience or are you attracting a different type of audience? 
if you're attracting a different type of audience and you're not attracting your target audience uh, because you notice, for instance, that, you know, most of your followers are 25 to 35 women when actually you're wanting 45 to 55 men or something along those lines. I'm just giving a really random example, but then you need to change your content. You need to change what's what you're putting out there and you need to engage with the right people. So this is really important in terms of not just are you doing, you know, are you up or down, but also are you attracting the right people to that Instagram uh, account um, who will then buy from you? Again, it's about converting. It's not just about uh, pretty pictures and what you think might look nice. It's about putting out there what will actually end up by converting into a sale or an inquiry or whatever it is that you, that you want from it. Um, so it's important in terms of social media to set out some goals. It's important to set out some, some content pillars as to what's important to you, what's important to the brand, what messages you want to put out there and kind of what goals you're expecting. Um, and again, just checking all of this through with Google Analytics, um, you know, what's coming through the other end. Um, If you're on Facebook, have a look at uh, face, uh, have a look at Meta Business Suite, um, really useful way of managing both Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, you can be managing on one screen the inbox for both. Um, and it just gives you an enormous amount of data again on um, your content and how it's performing and your, your uh, audiences, your followers, that kind of thing. Um, so just lastly in this section, it will very much depend whether you're a multinational like Nestle or a startup, what data is available, but there is always data available and there is always data available that will help you make the best decisions for your brand or so, you know, brand product or service, whatever it is. Um, and I really encourage you to go and have a look at these things. Um, as, as I say, whether it's once a year or several times a year, you need to keep on top of what's going on because that's the only way that you're going to make sure that your product is the most competitive that it can be within its market is the most appealing that it can be to its target audience and that you, you grow, you grow and prosper um, and you stay ahead of the game. Um, just some quantitative basics and qualitative basics. So quantitative, I'm, this is a very basic way of understanding it is basic, is, is about uh, facts, no, sorry, figures and qualitative is about facts. So quantitative is usually, you know, numbers, figures, qualitative is more about feedback and facts. So some basics on the quantitative side of things is, you know, obviously your sales, uh, your turnover, your profit. Profit is a really important one to look at, and I would really encourage you to look at that. Um, I think it's turnover is vanity, profit is sanity is the expression. Turnover is vanity, profit is sanity. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's pretty much that, and you get the idea. Profit ultimately is what it comes down to. It doesn't matter how much money you've made at a sales, total sales, uh, you know, perspective. If your, your product isn't prof profitable, your service isn't profitable, you're not making any m money on the bottom line. So just make sure you, you keep track also of profit. And then obviously the other measurements that we've just been through. Uh, qualitative things like surveys are great. Um, Google Forms has survey uh, survey kind of form available. Um, survey Monkey is another one. There are loads basically. Um, Facebook groups are quite good at um, giving you feedback on things. Networking sessions. There's lots of networking sessions available. Enterprise Nation offers some, other people offer others. I've just gone a bit dark. I don't know why that is. Um, hopefully it hasn't affected your, your view of me. Um, but uh, um, yeah, so there are lots of ways of getting feedback on ideas. Um, very easy to go into a networking session. Um, there are lots of um, either face-to-face -face ones now, still online ones. Um, you always get a chance to uh, talk about your business and it's a great forum. And you get a chance to talk about your business for like a minute or so, you, you obviously explain, but then you go often into breakout groups uh, where there are maybe three, four, five of you talking about your businesses. And it's, they're great forums to share ideas, see what, what people like, see what people don't like. Obviously just bearing in mind, are they your target audience or not? Or is it just feedback? Um, I'm just going to stay on this actually, just for a second. Um, I realized when I went through my presentation this week that there's an enormous amount of me talking and that for, for an extended period of time. And um, I just wondered whether you could all help me understand a little bit, because I will see uh, obviously these notes, but if you could all maybe put in the chat, uh, whether you come from a startup, a small business, a medium sized business or a multinational, it would really help to understand like who I'm talking to and whether today has been useful, because obviously, um, depending on whether you're a startup, 
business owner and you have no marketing experience at all, or whether you're, you know, you work in a multinational, uh, potentially for, for some of the sponsors, uh, and you obviously, you know, have a high level of marketing knowledge, um, it will depend on how, how useful this um, presentation has been um, today for you. So it'd be really useful for me to know. So if you could write that just basically in the chat box, just write uh, startup, small, medium or multinational. It'd give me a really good idea of, of who you are. And that's a great thing to know. So moving on to what do we do with all of that analysis? Well, all of that analysis helps us to figure out a strategy for our brand, for our product, for our service. Um, basically put all the information together. Um, you can use uh, strat strategic planning techniques like SWOT, for instance, uh, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. It's just about putting all of that strengths, putting the title, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and then underneath putting where you believe you stand based on the analysis that you've done. Um, it will help you plan if you don't already have a vision, mission or values, it will help you maybe plan for that or maybe adapt what you've currently got. Um, at Nestle, we used to have a very simple grid and it was basically there was a goal at the top and uh, the goal was usually three to five years. And then in this grid, we started off with objectives first, strategies, measures, timings, very simple grid. You might, you know, you might be of the school um, to do other strategic kind of grids, uh, and that's absolutely fine. I've been told about others. Uh, this is just one that I go back to that none of them bad as long as you're doing this. That's the main thing. So with objectives, for instance, you might have things like to drive awareness, to drive trial, to drive average weight of purchase, which basically means we're just getting people to buy more, uh, you know, um, increasing their, their weight of purchase. Um, and to drive loyalty. So those tend to be four key objectives, depending at what, what you're trying to sell at what point, how well you've done, whether you're at launch stage or whether you're kind of like further down the road with the products. Um, but these are just um, interesting um, interesting things for you to do. Um, interesting is probably the right, wrong word, key things for you to do. Um, And um, as I said before, in terms of the quantitative and qualitative information, it's good for you to get a balanced viewpoint and to get all your answers, all your ducks in a row, all your questions answered and make sure that you are, you know as much as you can about your, your product or service and that you go ahead in the best possible way, having done the analysis, basically. This also means, by the way, that you get less attracted to shiny objects. I've spoken to quite a lot of business owners that um, do admit being attracted to shiny objects. So um, if, for instance, somebody calls you up and promises you the world, you know, promises to get you on page one of Google or somebody else calls you up and tells you about the, the miracles that can be achieved through um, Instagram or whatever. Um, ultimately, if you don't have it, if you don't have a strategy in place, you will be tempted to go for these shiny objects and these promises. Um, what is a good thing is obviously once you have the strategy in place, you're very focused on, on where you wanna go next. And um, that's a good thing because it basically means you don't go off in all loads of directions and you've got something very uh, concrete to work towards. So you've got concrete objectives, you know exactly what, what you want to be doing. You've got strategies to back up those objectives. You've got measures as in how you're gonna measure it all and timings, you know, when you're gonna do these things by. And by having that, you don't, you don't get distracted. You don't go off in other directions uh, that might um, hamper your progress basically. Um, motivational public speaker, Brian Tracy, you might know him from uh, Eat That Frog, the book, or The Psychology of Selling, um, has said, continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. Completely agree. We cannot be arrogant. We have to keep learning. We have to keep improving. We have to keep growing as individuals and for our businesses. Um, so I'd, I'd encourage you to stay, stay inspired, to keep learning. Uh, Google Digital Garage, is an incredible resource uh, in terms of online digital skills. Go and look it up if you don't know about it. There are loads of free webinars online. Um, Enterprise Nation has a whole load of webinars online that you can, you can access free of charge. There are podcasts, there are email newsletters. I said to you before about Marketing Week, but there are loads of other marketing tools and resources that offer free email newsletters. Um, and you can just get tips into your, your inbox all the time. There are books this year I've um, started reading. I don't know why, well, uh, you know, uh, I do the same as everyone else. You know, I sometimes get sidetracked and there are other things in my life going on and I don't, you know, don't always read, haven't read for a little while. And then this year I started reading again. 
and it's amazing. I mean, especially if you're reading and making notes and then acting on those notes, um, it, it really does help to inspire and to refresh your thinking. So I've been reading Seth Godin, who is, you know, an icon in marketing. Um, also Al Rees and Jack Trout, uh, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Um, and there are loads. I mean, there's, um, I think it's Daniel Priestley that I'm uh, looking at next, oversubscribed. I mean, there are loads as well. You can have a look in Facebook groups. People mention them all the time. And such a good, um, such good inspiration and, 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 you know, really helps. So I would really encourage that. Um, right. The next steps really are talking about free tools, uh, free tools to help you develop your brand. As I said, some of these you might know, some of these you might not. I'm just going to go through them briefly. There are others. These are not the, the only ones available. Um, when you manage a business, it's basically critical to capture uh, the attention of people and to communicate your business uh, incredibly well to your target audience in order to make them want to engage and buy and uh, love your brand, basically. Canva is a genius tool and a complete lifesaver. Um, basically, whether you want, uh, I mean, you can see the background here, this was done by Canva. Um, if you want a, an Instagram story, if you want a video, if you want a leaflet, if you want a presentation, whatever you want from a marketing point of view, Canva will help you. There's a free option, which is perfectly fine. And there's a paid version if you want access to some more templates uh, and some other services. And I think it's 99 pounds. Um, so very um, um, accessible, um, you know, very cost effective. Um, Unsplash, um, free photos uh, for personal business use. Make sure you look at the licensing agreement. But um, the last time I looked, you can pretty much use them, um, you know, you can use them very easily for your business. Um, just make sure, obviously, on your website, maybe that there's a mixture of uh, lifestyle and real photographs. You know, you might also want to be showing yourself. You might want to be showing examples of your work, but you also want high quality lifestyle photographs. And Unsplash really helps with that. Um, in terms of photo editing, photo is my go to. Um, particularly when I'm resizing photos. Um, so it's particularly useful for that. You know, there are a lot of platforms out there that um, demand certain sizes of photos and Photor helps to, to make that happen. Um, email marketing enjoys some of the best conversion rates uh, in marketing. Um, and, uh, you know, what better way to communicate with somebody who's actually given you their email? It's somebody who is asking you to write to them, asking you to tell them about your business. I mean, what, you know, who better to communicate with, basically. You're not trying to go out there cold and get new people. These people are giving you their emails. So they're really worth talking to um, and, and building a relationship with. So I would encourage you to look at email. Um, I would encourage you to look at a sequence of introductory emails, which basically means that once you've collected the email, there are two, three, four, five emails that go out without even having to think about it, telling people about how amazing your brand is. You might have one email that tells them, that gives them a discount. You might have one email telling them if you're sustainable or you've got something special to say about yourself. You might have one email telling them about how you, how you source your um, materials. Um, you know, you might have one email talking about testimonials, you know, just building the building the perception of your brand in their minds and, and making them want to engage and buy. Um, MailChimp is a good is a good way of doing that. But there are others um, there. And it's very much dependent on what you want. So Brevo, for instance, I think used to be called Send in Blue, has a CRM functionality. Um, others have other functionalities. It's really dependent on what you want and what type of business you are. Um, on this, by the way, I'm just going to ask the I'm going to ask the floor a question um, because I've been looking at it and I've got somebody else looking at it as well. I've recently started working uh, with a charity on a pro bono basis, and um, I have been looking at various CRM systems and email systems for this very small charity. So, if anyone has any um, feedback to give in the chat box again about charity emailing uh, and you know that's slightly different from what I've done before in that you know charity email you're talking about you know you need to, to keep track of things like volunteers but also donors um, and whether they're giving you know um, prizes whether they're giving funds you know that those it needs to be a little bit more sophisticated so if you've got any um, any, any feedback on that that'd be great at the moment some things like um, Salesforce plus MailChimp or something like that is kind of what we're looking at. Or I think there's something called Donor Perfect. Um, 
but there are loads of things out there and I don't think you're ever going to choose the wrong one I think as long as you start emailing people and you 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 uh, you know you have a strategy behind that communication I think that's the most important thing um, uber suggest is super useful from a search engine optimization point of view I'm not going to go into it into too many details it's um, founded by a guy called Neil Patel he is great some people who are maybe higher up the scale in terms of search engine optimization might kind of turn their noses up at the upper tail, but I would completely recommend that you sign up to his newsletter and um, go on to Uber Suggest because he's got some really useful tools and particularly for small business owners. I'm not saying that this is the, you know, this is the solution for multinationals, but I'm saying for small businesses, Uber Suggest is perfect. Um, so go and have a look. Um, and Google Keyword Planner also in terms of uh, telling you what keywords you could be thinking about. And um, word, of, word of warning on keywords, don't just look at the keyword that you think would be the best one for your target audience. Also look at how competitive that keyword is, because if you're a very small brand and you're trying to compete on a keyword that everyone else wants, you're just never going to show up on page one of Google. That's just a fact, unless you potentially have a long tail keyword. Um, so just, just be reasonable about what keywords you want to go after and be reasonable at what position you're in right now and where you stand a chance of ranking for those keywords. Um, I did a lunch and learn recently, uh, seven essential online tools for small businesses, a lunch and learn on enterprise nation. If you go and have a look at that, I've gone through some of these um, tools in a little bit more detail and I've shown screenshots so that you can, you know, it's easier to, to go through them after the event um, and um, so that they become familiar to you. So have a look at that. I've also paid, put at the bottom there, there are also paid versions. Yes, I think I've covered that with most of that, notably Canva. Um, copywriting, actually, ChatGPT, I haven't, uh, I skimmed over that. Um, ChatGPT is very helpful, but you just need to be aware that it will not so solve all your problems. So I would fully encourage you to go and have a look at it. It is extremely helpful. However, um, Google will, notice if things have been written not in a human way if they've been written a little bit by a machine so you need to humanize whatever it is that you're you're having help with um, and use words that maybe you would use or sentence structures that you would maybe use in a tone that you would maybe use you also need to when you use chat gpt use prompts so don't just say do this um, i would recommend that you say do this in this tone in this way uh, for this audience, you know, those types of things. And, and also, obviously, if you can give ChatGPT some information about your particular brand, um, then that's helpful. But give it, give it some, some prompts that are useful rather than just um, thinking that it will solve all your problems. So um, final part of the presentation, stretch. I think we can all stretch. Um, the final part, hopefully I'm not running out of time. Um, five free marketing tactics that you can uh, consider uh, for your business. Um, so let's unpack these ones here. Um, we're talking about Google business profile, social media, collaborations, search engine optimization, and exploring new distribution channels. So Google business profile is a complete and utter no brainer. Google business profile helps to be found on search and in maps by Google. So my recommendation is um, go and go and find it. You don't even need a website to be on Google business profile. So go and find it, fill in all the details. Don't just fill in the obvious ones, fill in every single section. Make sure that your NAP is consistent across this and all other directories. So NAP is name, address, phone number. Make sure it's consistent across. Google does not like inconsistencies. So literally, if you've written something street, then make sure that you write streets, don't write ST, for instance, you know, just make sure everything, if, you, if you've given one phone number in one directory, make sure you use that same phone number across the board, don't swap sometimes mobile, sometimes landlines, you know, that kind of thing. So NAP, name, address, phone number has to be consistent. Um, update the sections, don't just do it once and then leave it. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to engage ongoing with Google business profile. So do it once and then maybe go in every couple of weeks or every month and you know, change the photos, add some photos with, by the way, label your photos with some keywords. Um, add a promotion, um, encourage your clients to write reviews, um, use those reviews for your uh, testimonials on your website. Um, so yeah, just keep things fresh, keep things fresh with Google Business Profile, but it's a great way of marketing yourself. 
and this is just a, a visual of it. I won't go into any more details, but you can see what it looks like and you can see some of the areas that you can focus on. So for instance, um, edit products, add photo, if you want to add a Q&A section, create an offer, you know, there's loads of things you can do. Social media. Um, social media is a phenomenal way of uh, growing um, your business. It really is. But as I showed you in the, the screenshot of uh, Google Analytics, you just need to know how well social media is working for you. Um, you know, you don't want to be doing it because your best mate says you should be doing it or your other friend who's got a similar business is doing it and it's working really well. You want to be doing it because it's working for you and it's attracting your target audience. So just to give you an example, if you are targeting 60s plus, a 60s plus audience, then TikTok might not be your, your, you know, your best option in terms of a, a social media platform. It might not be worth you spending. You, know, you might get something from TikTok, but is it really worth you spending that money, time and attention on a platform that's not really targeting your key audience? So just bear these things in mind, choose wisely, manage your time. Uh, I have to think about organic and paid as well. There, are, Obviously, if you're just posting, uh, that's organic. You can also do paid um, stints on social media. It's harder now to actually uh, cut through with organic um, than it was uh, a few years ago. Um, but it still is possible, you know, if you're if you're putting out the right content. Um, consider newer high potential platforms. So, for instance, TikTok is, is newer compared to some of the others. Uh, Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest isn't so new, but it, you know, because it's possibly underutilized, it's not one of the biggest platforms. There are opportunities there where you can shine. Threads obviously just come onto the market um, to contend with Twitter. Um, so just keep, keep your eye out on these things. It doesn't mean, by the way, that you have to do everything. I would not recommend that you do everything. I, re I recommend that you choose the ones that are the best for your target audience and where you can shine the best and then focus on those, um, you know, up to you whether you do a little bit across five platforms or a lot on one, possibly on lot on one is better in terms of growing the community and making your presence known. Uh, optimize trending formats. So for instance, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts, anything that's trending on a format that that, that social media platform is, is wanting you to spend time on and will reward you by putting more eyeballs on your, you know, on your website or on your brands then just have a look at, at, at those things. Um, hashtags, refresh your hashtags, don't just keep the same ones. Make sure that you use a mixture of hashtags, local hashtags if you're a local business, um, obviously hashtags related to your industry. Um, just freshen it up a bit and just have a look at what other people are doing. And also the ability to sell directly. Some people are not taking advantage of that. There are There is a shopping ability on some of the social media platforms and just make sure that you look at that. Collaborations, um, fantastic way of um, getting yourself out there. Um, first and foremost, just make sure that you're collaborating with the right type of company. You want to, again, you want to be collaborating with a company that is um, true to your values, that resembles you, that is targeting the same target audience. You don't want to be wasting time with a company that, you know, is none of those things. Also a company that has as much passion as you in, in terms of collaboration. There's no point in spending time trying to attract a company that is actually not that interested and is not going to be doing the job properly with you. So all of these things are important to take into consideration. Um, there are loads of ways to collaborate. I'm just going to give you a few here. So um, here is a picture showing uh, a collaboration I did when I was um, working on my startup fashion brand. So I thought about um, aligned businesses, businesses that were at that premium, super premium positioning that were wanting to attract people who are interested in summer because I had a summer dress brands. Um, so, you know, I was looking at like um, sun, sun products, um, jewelry, accessories, um, sunglasses, those types of things. So it worked really well with my brand at the time that was a summer dress brand and we did a giveaway uh, and all of us promoted that giveaway. Now, as a fashion startup, I also did a blog post which we all shared on our respective websites and all linked to each other. So again, these are powerful ways that you can draw other people's audiences to you. Um, leaflet distribution, I'm completely for online and offline. Um, a lot of people now just talk about digital marketing. Um, there is very much room for um, offline marketing too and local marketing. So for instance, um, with leaf leaflet distribution, one of, well, my restaurant clients um, shared leaflets with the local gym. 
and similarly the local gym shared leaflets with my restaurant clients and um, that means that obviously you're driving awareness to that local base of, of customers and that local base of customers who who need to have the income available to go to a gym or to go to a restaurant if you see what I mean so we also did um, we shared social media posts so Instagram stories that kind of thing with that gym and that restaurant so there are lots of ways that you can collaborate. I would really encourage you to have a think about who you know, what your network is like, who you can approach. Uh, but, get, but again, bearing those things in mind of, you know, what your brand stands for, making sure that the brands that you align with have similar values, et cetera, et cetera. Search engine optimization. Um, Google Search Console will help you understand what you're currently, what search terms you're currently ranking for, who's clicking, um, how many impressions, that kind of thing. That can help guide you in terms of how well you're doing right now with search terms. Uh, Google Keyword Planner will help you look at what new keywords you might want to rank for and how you, know, you can then incorporate that into your content. But obviously you need to do that in the, in, in, in the right way uh, in order for it to kind of work properly. And Uber Suggest can tell you about um, problems that you might have on your website um, with regards to search engine optimization, so challenges. So for instance, it might tell you that your, you know, the titles on some of your pages are too long or too short or your meta description is too long or too short, or you know, these types of technical things, um, or you know, your website is not quick enough. Uh, it might not be quick enough on mobile, it might not be quick enough on desktop. It tells you about some of these technical issues that obviously are important search engine optimization. Um, three key areas of search engine optimization are technical, um, on-page and off-page. Um, so just be aware that there, that there are multiple things you need to do from a search engine optimization point of view. And lastly, exploring new distribution channels. Um, this might be more relevant to products, not services. I would encourage you to go and have a look online and offline marketplaces. So obviously, offline are brick and mortar stores and online are, you know, things like eBay or um, Amazon or Zalando, et cetera. Just a word of warning, um, when I had my fashion startup brand, I was accepted by Zalando. And at the time I was super excited and, you know, it's a bit of a coup. Oh my God, I'm such a small ethically made fashion brand, but you know, Zalando, this big giant have accepted me. Um, what you then realize is that they have a lot of conditions. So um, at the time, unfortunately, my brand wasn't particularly profitable um, because I was making eth ethically made, sustain sustainably minded um, fabrics, that type of thing. Um, made in London, you know, um, so, it wasn't incredibly profitable and the margin that Zalando wanted was huge and the um, requirements that they had in terms of returns, customer service, all those all those types of things were, were intense. So just be aware that anytime you sell through someone else, whether it's a marketplace, a distributor or whoever, that there will be an impact on your margin and your profit and just take that into consideration. Obviously, if you're a fast moving uh, product and um, you have enormous amounts of profits, then, then that's easy peasy. But if you haven't built that profit in, um, then you just need to look at those, those figures. Um, there are also distributors, you know, where you basically sell into one distributor and they, they do lots of um, distributing for you across other, other um, channels. Um, and then there's export. Um, so I would encourage you to look at the likes of the Department of Trade and Industry, um, the government department for export, et cetera, et cetera. They're very helpful. And if you're really serious about export, um, then there are, you know, there are potentially grants or, or you know, help, financial help uh, to be had there. Um, so I would encourage you to look at that. Um, and now I'm opening up to the floor. So I, I really hope uh, that this has been helpful. Um, if you could, before we go to the Q&A, if you could share your favorite ways to do marketing on a shoestring budget in the chat, that would be amazing because obviously that would benefit everyone. I've covered some, there are many others. Um, and obviously it's very much dependent on the brands and who you're targeting as to what will work best for you. It's not a one fits all, one, one, you know, one solution fits all thing. There are some things obviously help all brands, but you know, um, th there are other very specific things you need to be doing for specific brands. So it's good to, to look at, uh, you know, look at everything. So if you've got any ideas, please put, put it in the chat or anything that you particularly like doing that's cost effective. Um, 
and then and then the q a really um questions over to you if you could connect with me on linkedin that would be great that will be in the chat box um i'm offering a free consultation um seven free marketing tips to anyone who would like that uh, so please do apply for that um i hope today has been really useful i hope it's helped to remind you of some of the essential things that you need to be doing and also inspire you to do other things and to use other tools that you know some of which you might not have been aware of um and yeah but look forward to your questions and um to hear back from you hi Catherine. thank you for delivering this presentation it was great to hear all this valuable information and we have some questions the first one is from tana and she was mentioning that she tried to create a Google profile, and but she doesn't have a location as they are on an online business. Have you ever had like a client with the same issue and how like can they overcome it? Because they'd say like they were not qualified to have a Google profile account because of that. Okay. Um if she could if she could email me and I'll have a chat and look at it separately. Um, just because I'll, I'll just remind everyone that in terms of, I'm, I'm a generalist, I'm very much a generalist, and there are some questions I won't be able to answer because of that. Um, and I tend to then go and have a look at, you know, how I can be of help afterwards. Um, so if she can email me, that would be great. And I will find out for her and I will talk to her about it. Um, I am, I mean, I'm just trying to think how I did it because I'm basically, I'm a, a business in Kent, but I'm not actually a shop front as in, and I, so I, I can't remember now whether, I gave them an address or not, but I do, I, I think you need an address of some description. So my gut feel would be that if, if she, what is she saying? That she doesn't want to give the address or that, that she's been refused the... Yeah, I feel like she doesn't want to give the address uh, because they don't have an, an location. So I guess- Okay, she, um, would... because I don't have a location and I give my I give my home address, I guess, because I'm comfortable with that. And some people give their home address because they're comfortable with that. If she's not comfortable giving her home address, an alternative would be to pay for an address and that's possible to do that. Or to use, for instance, her accountant's address you know, there are ways of doing that as well, but but you do need an address. And the fact is ultimately, even in terms of building directory listings, which is another good way of, 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 of driving awareness for yourself and also for search engine optimization, um, you need an address, you need some form of address. So, um, so yeah, she just needs to have a little think about that. I mean, in terms of being fearful of putting an address out there, I understand, but there are so many businesses who, you know, who, who do put their address out there. I guess if she's a, there are various options you know if she doesn't want to put her own personal one that there are various options Thank but let you. her email me and we can talk it through together yeah i have put the, um, your email on the chat so like people can connect with you over there and we're receiving really good comments osai said like i would highly recommend you to connect with catherine for the free marketing consultation it was a lifesaver for her business and oh said, who says that osai and also Ah, oh, thank you. That's so kind of her. That's so kind of her. Yes, we did connect after the last uh, lunch and learn. Perfect. And just to wrap up, like the last question will be, uh, like in your experience, what is the most efficient funnel to make the first 10 sales of a business? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't have an answer to that, to be completely frank. I don't have an answer to that. Um, I always come back to looking at everything because you know you're talking you're talking about funnels, um, but you need to make sure that your core strategy is right before you even go into funnels. I see so many businesses who are wanting to spend money on digital marketing or funnels or whatever when their core business is not right. You know the product offering is not, and they can't understand why, so they just throw money at it. But you know they might not have the right customer journey on their website they might not be communicating and it might be too busy you know they might not be appealing enough but they can't see that because it's their business and they're too close to it so um i don't have an answer for that particular question i would just recommend that people don't just focus on funnels they they look at the whole thing and they look also at what works for them because every business is different what works for one business is different to what works for another and ultimately, funnels often point back to the website or a landing page. And the website has to sell for you. You know, it has to be converting, has to be highly appealing, engaging, compelling and convert. So I would, um, yeah, I, I would I would recommend people look at that 
as part of their marketing rather than just focusing on funnels. The funnels, will, it will depend on each business. Thank you, Katarina. And do you have like any last top tip for our audience before we go to the next speaker? No, I think I've, I've shared as much as I can. I've shared lots of very specific examples of how you can do these things. Um, yeah, so I, I hope it's been helpful. Yeah, it has been. It has been great to have you here. Um, please remember to visit Business Connected to search to further resources for your business and connect with Catherine as well. Now we will go to the second presentation of Lindsay. So I will like now try to set up her slides. Thank you, Catherine, again. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. Thank you. Welcome back to the second part of this Business Connected Digital series. Our second speaker is Lindsay James. She has built multiple successful high street and e-commerce brands on the power of curiosity, offering exciting new concepts to the market that customers can help but rave about. She will explain how to, be, how to become a brand pioneer, building a, a loyal tribe of customers who do the marketing for you. So I will leave Lindsay the virtual stage now. Thank you for that great introduction. Um, I'll just take this uh, headphone out now. Um, it's great to be back here um, speaking for Vodafone and for Enterprise Nation and the sponsors. Um, thank you for inviting me back. And the last time I was here, I was talking about photography. It's, it's kind of what I'm known for. It's how my career started. Um, but since then, I've built multiple businesses and now uh, coach businesses and brands um, in terms of helping them to create something that is going to magnetize it's going to help people just come to them and um and it was great listening to Catherine today and talking about there's so many um uh, ideas she got to share with you there and um and so my approach is quite different um I focus on building something that is um, curious, that inspires your customers and means that you don't have to spend all of your um, efforts in apps and in looking at all the data and everything else. I mean, the data absolutely is key to see how you're doing, um, but I've never looked at a competitor to see how they're doing. I've never looked at, um, uh, you know, spent time looking at um, other businesses because I've always focused on doing this one thing well and you may see on the poster behind me um, this is this is something that I rave about um, with, with my businesses that I coach and um, and it's something that I found that when I was running my own businesses I could focus on this one thing and not be uh, you know sometimes have to blinker yourself and focus on this one thing and do it really well and create something really magical and people will do the marketing for you they'll be shouting about um, your brand for you. So today we're going to be talking about attracting a tribe. So it's a different approach to Catherine's, but um, Catherine's advice is great as well. Um, looking at all those amazing tools that she shared, I've even noted a few down myself to look at. So it's great to um, look at marketing uh, on a, as a whole, as, as uh, Catherine was helping you with there. Um, but what I'm doing is talking about your business and how you can um, attract those perfect customers. And um, and this is this is what we want, right? We want to spend more time doing what we love and attract those perfect customers so that they can do the marketing for us. They will shout, shout about it for us. So um, let me just, uh, I've got so many screens going on here. <laughs> Goodness me, right, let me get everything in the right place so I can see I've got one screen over there, one screen over here, I've got the chat in one place, Q&A in another, but I'll, uh, I'll just need to make sure that I'm sharing the right slides with you here. Okay, so let me make sure this changes when I hit, yeah, okay, so we're talking about attracting a tribe and when I talk about a tribe, um, you might not realize that you're maybe part of a tribe of people who love a particular brand. So I'd love for you to take a moment right now to think about a brand that you love telling their story you love talking about them there will be one and one that I thought of this morning as I was getting dressed was Hyatt Denim and this is not a plug for them this is a, a brand that I love and the difference here when I was slipping on my jeans today which weren't my Hyatt jeans they were my other jeans that are from a supermarket or somewhere I don't know <laughs> Um, but they don't have a story to tell. So I bought in my Hyatt jeans, okay? And the great thing about this brand is that I do the marketing for them because they have features and they have a story to tell. So I'd love for you to think about a, a brand that you love telling their story. This is what I'm going to try and help you to imagine for your own business, how you can 
put a spin on your business and we all have a unique story to tell we all have something unique that doesn't mean you need to look at your competitors it means what makes you amazing and you probably quite get quite negative about looking at competitors I know um I I would if I was just constantly looking at what other people were doing because I'm thinking I know what I do is amazing so have a think about I mean you're probably thinking at the moment I don't know what my thing is that makes me amazing but I can tell you absolutely if you were one of my coaching students I would absolutely squeeze that out of you (laughs) because I know that you have something that makes you amazing or unique your brand even if you're one of many hairdressers in town you will have something that is unique to you and makes you amazing. And so when we are able to put that out on the surface, that's when we attract customers like me with these Hyatt jeans going, oh, you know, I want to tell people about them. And it's because they have a story. And the founders of this particular business are re-employing the town of Cardigan, who are skilled um, denim artisans. They're re-employing them from the time that it was a really busy manufacturing town. And then the the factories moved abroad. And this um, lovely couple, Claire and David, have um, taken it on themselves to try and re-employ all those grand masters as they call them to make beautiful jeans and now they're very beautiful expensive jeans that you can buy from Hyatt Denim but people do the raving for them because they've got that story I was able to tell you that story in seconds so I want you to try and kind of get your story out there to your customers because this is the most powerful thing I believe in marketing with my own businesses and I'll talk about those in a second it was absolutely the most powerful thing uh, for my brands, when we have a story to tell or or you can attract a tribe, even if you don't have a particular story or a history to tell, it might be a story about your, how your product helps somebody um, or, or what's unique about the, the certain uh, products that you've curated if you're a retailer. So it's about getting that um, out there and, and uh, getting people to do that, that link for you. So I'm going to explain that for you. But with these gorgeous jeans they've got little features on them like a little red kind of tag on the front here which means that they've been made on an age-old machine that's been in the factory for years that they adopted so all these little things you can see I'm excited about I'm part of that brand's tribe so I want to help you find your tribe and Catherine did touch on the fact that you know you're thinking about your demographic but I'm thinking about your perfect customer that perfect customer who's going to be like me and tell everyone about this brand and that's what you want right that is worth so much more um, because it's a testimonial isn't it that's worth so much more to your business so that's what I mean by tribe in case you're thinking you know I'm going to get loads of people following you with you know it's 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 a tribe in the sense of a um, a tribe of people who absolutely love your brand Now, one of the brands that I'm um, probably most famous for, and it it was kind of an accidental business, really, but it was an industry leader, is photo boards. And that was a product, um, and I'm not trying to sell it to you here, but it's a product that um, I want to reference back to in what I'm talking about today so that you understand um, how this worked, how this connection worked. And this particular product, it's a photography backdrop that you can use really close up. That was the the sort of the key selling point on that. So you can imagine when people come to us and say, hey, do you make bigger ones? We tried that once and I realized, why are we doing that? That we're not doing our one thing well that I've got on my poster behind me here. We're not, which by the way, I think is a Hyatt uh, denim poster. Um, But it's doing that one thing well. No, this is what we do. This is what we're good at. I'm sure you've got your thing. This is your magic that I'm referring to that you're good at. And that's what's going to magnetize people towards your brand. So this one thing that we were doing well is to create small backdrops. They're still available, but we now sell to um, trade only. So to a series of stockists. Um, But this is the thing that we were doing and sticking with doing with that particular brand. But that actually was a brand that I started when I said accidental, I started it as a a product for my students. I was teaching photography, having been a commercial photographer for many years, um, and I'm now in my 20th year of self-employment, so I've done all sorts of um, exciting projects. Um, But this particular one, it did go viral. Uh, It hit um, Instagram just at the right time um, that everyone started photographing their cup of coffee. And you can probably remember that time when um, everyone started photographing their dinner and sharing it on Facebook and photographing their cup of coffee and sharing it on Instagram. Even better if it's got a heart there in the froth. 
you can probably tell I'm a little bit cynical about this. And um, but we were there creating great backdrops for product photographers, for commercial photographers who are able to then also use these as uh, interesting products for their business. But that created a tribe of people who were raving about that thing because we were just doing that one thing and they were able to say to their friends, to their photographers who they knew, to their fellow business owners, if you want a backdrop that's great for small close-ups that you can get really close up to, that's what you want. And that's what you want to be known for is doing that one thing well. Another brand that I created, and again, I'm just referencing this so that you know me, this isn't in existence anymore. I closed this one down. This was a great example. Okay. And this is one thing that I can teach you in 20 years of self-employment. Well, two things, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Okay. And when you're not enjoying something anymore, move on. Um, and I, I don't know, I, there was something in, in the previous um, presentation that, that um, kind of rang a bell for me. And it was ab about sort of not wanting to be one of those brands that like a Kodak, that was it. And Catherine mentioned not wanting to be a Kodak doing that thing um, and then not known anymore. And I think if you're the kind of business who's in business purely for money, purely for growing um, wealth in that way, um, then yeah, you wouldn't want to be that kind of business that was known for something and then not okay um not following uh, Catherine's example there was not following through and listening to what was happening with the market and that's what happened with Kodak they they could have jumped onto that uh, digital bandwagon uh, much sooner but if we're in a business which I'm sure a lot of you are and let me know in the chat because I can see this chat in front of me and here let me let me know if you're still here <laughs> let me know if you're tuning in give me a wave let me know where you're tuning in from because I can see that in front of me here um if you are a independent business that is driven by purpose and passion and loving what you do, and in fact, you are your perfect customer because you've created something because there was a gap in the market, like there was with photo boards. I was a photographer. You couldn't buy um, at the time fake backdrops that were good quality. Um, hey, 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 I'm getting all these hellos now. Huge welcome. Thank you for saying hello. It really helps to see that feedback. Um, so if you are a business, and let me know if you're a business, you're driven by passion and purpose and not through money, then the most wealth that you can have in the world is freedom, right? And that's, yes, money buys that freedom, but also doing what you love buys that freedom. So if you're a business owner who's here going, I don't want to know about your passion and purpose, I want to be, and it's great to hear that people are, yes, <laughs> I love that. Um, that's what I'm all about. You're part of my tribe. Um, but if you're driven just purely by um, growing a business and I was once asked uh, years ago when I was telling the story of photo boards and how it had grown so quickly um, a guy asked me at a live event what's your exit strategy I said I'm not going anywhere <laughs> I'm not exiting okay this is this is my um I, I love what I do this is just one project photo boards was just one product that I sold at the time but I was teaching photography to brand owners and which I still do and um and helping them grow their business. And this was just another product. Photo Balls was just another product. I launched it and that's why it kind of, it, it ended up kind of getting out of control. And Ocurio, which was the homewares brand that I created here on screen. And, and again, I'm not, I, you can't buy anything from here anymore. So I'm not trying to sell this to you. I'm trying to let you, uh, ref, I'm trying to reference back to these shortly. Um, but this was an example, uh, again, of another product that I created. It was photography props, for the people who bought the photo boards and said, hey, where do you get those nice bowls, those nice spoons and so on. And so I created this online brand. This one started online and created a subscription model and um, then very excitedly grew it into a big lifestyle store and coffee bar because why not? <laughs> and, uh, and it was great fun, but um, it's great fun until the pandemic closed it eight weeks later. So I'd made a huge investment in something really beautiful, biggest sort of the pinnacle of my career, I would imagine at the time. Um, or as I thought. And um, then when you're surrounded by stock, pallets and pallets of stock and needing a warehouse rather than locating in beautiful barns in the countryside, that's when, and this is why I was referring to just because you can doesn't mean you should. And also, if you're not enjoying this anymore, don't do it, move on. Because the greatest wealth and so many people are building businesses and wanting to know all about these skills and marketing and everything. And don't worry, I'm gonna share that with you in, in a moment. 
but something that you can tell I'm very passionate about <laughs> you won't shut me up about this is doing something that you love and that absolutely shines out of you like sunshine when you're when you're so enthusiastic about that thing you're selling so for me I'm not saying Catherine's advice is bad advice there with um, looking at your competitors if you're about growing a business if you're about um taking over a market or being a market leader in a specific area absolutely you should be doing that if you're driven by passion and purpose which is um which is my kind of slant on this marketing malarkey um if you're driven by passion and purpose and you want and you know that your thing is amazing you just need to connect it to the person who you know would think your thing is amazing that's where i'm help you i'm here to help you uh, make that connection so let me show you how we do this now, this is nothing new in terms of marketing, um, but I kind of refer to it slightly differently. So you may have heard of your hook, your story and your offer being those three kind of things and write those down. But I refer to them as your magnet, your story and your offer. Um, but this is kind of a well-known um, kind of marketing concept. And those of you who are asking about funnels, I'm big on funnels. It's about um, driving people into that sales funnel and then nurturing them on that journey to ensure that your tribe are happy. You can think you can um, use a different word than tribe if you don't like that. It's um, but it's it's that kind of following that core following. And I'm not talking about numbers on Instagram. I'm talking about those um, 10 people who will tell everyone about your business are way more than the 20,000 you might have on Instagram. We've got 20,000 followers on photo boards, Instagram half of them we don't even ship to so I don't you know they, they, remember your followers are choosing to follow you you're not cherry picking them so to do things like just shouting on social media to a load of people who have just come along for the ride um is not necessarily a great use of your time and I know Catherine shares that that point of view as well in terms of it's not all about social media it's about converting it's about making sure that you're communicating correctly and I'm going to give you some tips on communication shortly so when we think about your magnet, your story, your offer, or in the traditional sense, your hook, your story and your offer, this is what you put out there. Your hook um, is what most people refer to. I like to think of it as a magnet because I think if we make what we're doing here really good and we make our, our world, if you imagine it as a globe, your business, your world, if you make that kind of really magnetic, you're going to be pulling, you're going to be gravitating people towards your world your brand and that's when you can tell them your story why you're, not necessarily your life history you know unless you want to share that unless that's relevant um but your story what what your product helps people with um what um what what solutions it can offer or why you started or like with the Hyatt denim example that um that story of them rebuilding, re-employing a town that, that was kind of pretty much all made redundant when factories moved out. So they're re-employing experts in an industry. So if you have a story, it might be that you've got generations of people in the same business or that you've started this business because um, it was a product that you found you really needed and was not available. So there, there's so many stories that you can tell. I'll come on to it, giving you some ideas about that shortly. And then what we do is we show them your offer. And I don't mean a special offer. I don't mean 20% off. I mean the amazing thing, the ta-da, <laughs> that, that's your offer, okay? When you go, look at my product, it's like opening a, a briefcase full of beautiful items at someone's door and saying, buy this. Um, so your offer is your, um, your, your final offering, your, 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 your product, if you like, or your service. So when we think of your magnet, your story, your offer, if I'm over here and I'm your perfect customer, if you're thinking at the moment, oh, Lindsay's like my ideal demographic, she's creative, she'd love this product. If you're thinking I'm your ideal customer and you want to reach me, if you make sure that the magnet is right and the story is right and the offering, the actual thing we get to at the end is right and you don't fall down on any of those things, there is absolutely no reason why we can't connect and why I can't make that purchase. Let me give you some harsh facts. And this is, I have to, I have to be quite kind of ruthless and relentless. I am known for being relentless because sometimes we just have to face facts that we're maybe looking in the wrong place. And social media is great. People want us to use social media. Those social media giants, they want us to move our whole businesses, our stores and everything onto their platform so they can make money. So it's it's not a conspiracy. It's that they're a business. OK, and um, I think a lot of people forget that they're not just a free service. They're a business. They're trying to make money. 
So that's that's a great platform. And as Catherine said as well, great platform, great for advertising, certainly great for retargeting ads and reaching out to people who have already looked at products on your website, reaching out to those people again through their social channels where they happen to be merrily looking elsewhere and you're trying to hook them back in. Um, but let's face the fact here, over 50% of social media traffic will bounce when it hits your website. It's a good, um, that is a good stat to look at when you're looking at your analytics that Catherine showed you how to do there. Have a look at your bounce rate. It's an important one that you want to try and reduce. But just overall, social media traffic that we pull to websites, typically over half of it will just bounce back. And we know why, because they were busy looking at Instagram. They were having a nice time. So when you've distracted them and pulled them over to your website, and unless you've shown them exactly what they want to see right there, they're probably going to go, no, I'm okay. I was having fun over here and, and ping back again. And so this is why um, the, um, the, the, the statistic is so high because of course people were having a nice time on social media when you pulled them away from what they were doing. But let's think of another thing that's happening here. And I think this is what a lot of, um, solopreneurs, brand owners, um, whether you're a startup or you're established, maybe, um, this is more one for established people you sometimes forget is that we're pulling them to a different style of website that, that they need to see. Um, so back in the day of typing in the W's and going to a website in the way that we used to to browse, um, we would end up on a catalog style website and that would have the header, the hero image, and probably one that slides and makes us all dizzy and then some um, categories that we can browse through and plenty of them and plenty of browsing and plenty of menus and all of that kind of thing. And a lot of us still have these kind of websites. But of course, when we're attracting people and trying to ping them from their social media bubble that they're in, um, if we manage to create a really beautiful post, and I'm imagining that a lot of your marketing time is spent creating beautiful content, let me know, hands up if that is you, that you feel through no fault of your own that that is where you need to be because you read things like you need to post on social eight times a day you need to be jumping around with, with your product on reels trust me as an introvert I don't want to be doing those things I'm not going to be out there jumping around with a photo board on reels I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in that so what we're doing when we're interrupting people and this is why it's called interruption marketing when we interrupt somebody on their social media we need to be pulling them to the thing that means that they can check out in a very swift Amazon style process. Not that we want to be Amazon, but this is why they're market leaders, right? This is why they do so well is because they make it very easy. So when we see that thing and we go, oh, wow, that thing, let's have a look at that. And then we land on one of these traditional style websites with lots of menus, lots of categories, lots of looking around to do that doesn't give us all of the information in an instant then we end up clicking away and bouncing. And so this is what we refer to as the bounce rate. And so this is what is happening when you see your bounce rate statistic in Google um, or in your website analytics. So say if you're using Shopify, you should be able to look at your own website analytics and see what your bounce rate is. And it will be a percentage of people who hit the first page that they land on and bounce straight back off like a trampoline. So what we want to do is encourage them to click to cart to purchase by making that website as as simple as possible, um, giving them all of the information. And this is why the future of websites is going to be landing pages and it's going to be sales funnels. So there's a lot of um, noise out there about, um, yeah, you've got to be on social media, but if you just imagine this kind of um, process of, yes, we can click through now and see something instantly that we need. This is more in line with the current way of shopping, isn't it? We know this as consumers. So I'm sure you know this as a consumer. It's sometimes very difficult to connect the two, your consumer side of your brain and your and your seller. But as a consumer, we know that when something is easy and we've clicked from Instagram on a product with the, that we like the look of and we go to a website that says, here's that product you just looked at on Instagram, Here's all the information you need. The, the, the shipping details are right there. I can tell you how long it's going to take to be delivered. Um, everything is right here on this landing page um, that you've landed on. That's why it's called a landing page. 
if it's all there and we can just add our details and add our card uh, our card details or, or hit on you know add our thumbprint on our phone and before we know it we've paid for the thing and and it's at, it's at our door and that's where um the future of e-commerce lies is in pulling people through our sales funnels so attracting people magnetizing them in nurturing them through a journey but also with the interruption style marketing that we're sharing with our social media so when you do that ensuring that when it brings you somebody to a website it's actually converting and this is what Catherine was referring to with conversions it's making sure that that website is totally enabled for allowing somebody to check out this is something that I, I coach businesses through. It's helping them find all the small wins on their website to help them. So um, I think uh, Carla shared the link there to my website if you're interested in, in joining one of my group coaching sessions and making your website more um, easy for people to check out. So let's have a look at the, the kind of the magnet, the story, the offer in more detail, because as I've explained to you, if you're at one end, my, I'm at the other and you think I'm a perfect match for your business, then we just need to work through that process. But I'm going to start by looking at the offering as I call it your business first because that's what we're attracting people to ultimately so it's not just your product or your service and I think so much marketing is buy this 20% off buy this you know whatever it's just like buy 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 shout 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 without telling a story without nurturing people through that process and also without then having that perfect offering at the end so it's not just your product or your service it's the pricing of it and the perceived value of it remember that everything has a perceived value really we we decide um what um if those of you are asking for the link it's lindsayjames.com so it's my name.com and um if you look at the um the pricing of your product the the value of it that perceived value it's like we we know this with designer brands okay we know with um in fact, if Carlo, if you could share the link that I um, that I shared that has the the offers on, just because I wouldn't want anyone here to to link through to my website and then um, then pay full price because I've actually shared a, a special offer. Um, so I can share that with you later if if not now. Um, so when we look at our um, value and what we are adding to our product, bear in mind if you're a jewelry designer, let's say, and I'm just picking um, because I, I do work with a lot of crafters and makers. Um, if we um, look at somebody who crafts a product, maybe you sell it through a marketplace or your own website. If you're selling a necklace, we know that we can buy necklaces that are five pounds and probably 5 million, you know, there's probably one out there that costs 5 million, but 5,000, 500, and possibly made with the same materials. It's that value that the customer puts on your product. And so connecting me with your business, connecting your perfect customer with your, your product involves um, making sure that your offering fits. So if you are uh, wanting to sell high priced items, you need to be making sure that your targeting and your customer, uh, you know, they align, they match. And so making sure that everything that you're offering here at the end aligns with your message that you're putting out is really important and the story that you're telling. It all needs to flow um, because it's very easy to fall down on one of those things. I'll uh, illustrate that shortly for you. So how and where you sell it, whether you're marketing at a craft fair, you can imagine if you take a five million pound necklace to an artisan craft fair, you're unlikely to sell because that's not aligned with you and your core values. So deciding who you are, and this is what I coach people through, is what makes you magic, your core values. And um, this is what we're looking at with your story. It's your brand. It's all about uh, what you stand for, even if you don't want to be the name behind you, even if you just want to sort of hide behind a brand name, that's fine. But knowing what your brand stands for um, gives you all of these stories to tell then, okay? It's, um, it, it allows you to talk, as Catherine was saying, through your email marketing, it um, allows you to talk through your social media about things that are more interesting, let's face it, than another email saying 10% off this weekend. We don't click on those. We don't open those. We have to add curiosity. And this is where you will really be able to expand on your marketing is by acknowledging what makes you unique, what acknowledging what makes your brand different and 
um, what it is that you're trying to get out there? What is it that you're trying to say to me about your brand? What what stories do you want me to tell to my friends about the the thread on the 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 jeans that are made by a really old machine or you know what what are you wanting to get through there that's that's what you need to be pushing out in your marketing that's what will magnetize people to you because your followers your customers your tribe will do all that storytelling for you people love to tell a story I've no story to tell whatsoever about the jeans I've bought from the supermarket but I've got a million stories about this brand so establishing and just taking time and I know you're really busy with your businesses but I would say if you can take this time for your business to establish who you are where your magic is if you can't find it I can help you find it because like I say I can squeeze that out of any brand (laughs) I can establish what makes you unique and how you can um, elaborate on that Um, that will help you have stories to tell and give your customers the stories to tell And then finally, when it comes to your magnet, um, and I will be moving on to um, how you can uh, consider these, I've written here, the temperature of your prospects, um, how you can pull people in. This is through your social posts, your marketing emails, your adverts, your promotions. But thinking back to that illustration I showed you of, of, and that harsh statistic of how social media traffic bounces, hopefully you're recognizing now that the answer to your marketing woes isn't spending more time on social media personally I don't think it's spending time looking at what competitors doing unless you're into it you know if you're a brand driven by passion and purpose then it's how can I get that passion and purpose out there my tribe will do the marketing for me Um, especially if you give them things like friends codes and affiliate codes and things like that to to even entice them further to, to make money while they're doing the shouting even better so we have to sort of concentrate on this converting people. The offering is the, the product, making sure it's priced right, making sure it's packaging is aligned with our core values. Is it made with recycled paper if that's kind of important to you? And, and making sure that every aspect of your little world is aligned with your with what your passion and your purpose is. What is that? And, and getting that message out there. When we tell stories, people connect this is how humans work when we tell these stories so we have no interest if we're just going on price and if you just want to run a business in a price war and again this is what I found with with my Ocurio brand it started out as one thing but very quickly was taken into a whole other world you know what started out as photo props very quickly ended up in homewares magazines in all these beautiful homewares magazines as a new brand to buy homewares from and as a person I'm um, all about upcycling and repurposing and styling things in different ways so my story which I really tried to get across with that brand was you could buy this beautiful wooden bowl you don't need to buy another wooden bowl because look at all the beautiful ways you can style it. I'm using my expertise and absolutely you will have, you you won't realize it again because you're probably humble and thinking, oh, you know, I'm just me, but you will have expertise that you can bring to your business. It might just be the fact that you know how to put a few things together in your beautiful shop or you might just anything, you know, you've got that skill set. And for me, I didn't realize, I just assumed everyone could style beautiful things in their home. And so when I would come up for a new idea of how somebody can um, style this wooden bowl. Um, you can use it for for storing things. You can use it in the kitchen. You can use it for magazines in your lounge and so on. So when um, when I'm creating a business based on that, obviously this it's not really aligned with um, selling a new wooden bowl next month, which is kind of where the business grew to. Is is how can we bring in more and more and more and sell more and more and more? And that wasn't really aligned, as you can see now, to my core values. I'm thinking. This I'm surrounded by pallets of imported stock. I don't want to hire a big warehouse on on an industrial estate. I'm doing this for a different reason. And so, when you when you finally align with your with with your core values, all the rest falls into place. It's like all, when everything lines up, it's easy. People do the shouting for you. you. Don't need to spend loads of time on Instagram and posting on social. You just you find that the sales just come in, and that's a really lovely place to be because you're putting out this kind of this is what we're about thing. So hopefully you're following me here. I'm trying to squeeze a lot of uh, coaching here into a very short session. Let me um, explain to you what the temperature of prospects. I mean, here they are. Here's my little prospects um, in their cold, warm and hot state. 
And this is when I want you to think about your marketing messages that you do put out. So when you do finally go to tell your story about your product or your service, imagining what temperature those prospects are, because they'll be different depending where you're putting that message out. And so many brands just go, shout, shout, shout. And we need to just shout. But you need to shout in a specific way, depending on um, whether somebody knows about you and your product, your business, um, whether they know that there's even a product available. Um, so this will really help elevate the results and the conversions from your marketing messages. So if you're somebody that loves to send out emails and send out social posts and um, does advertising, how you word it, and I'm big on consumer psychology, and this plays a huge part here, how you word things for your customer will make a huge difference for your prospects, not necessarily your customer yet. So a cold prospect. We're not talking a cold hearted person here. We're talking a, a person who knows that there is a uh, that they have a problem that they need a solution for. And this problem might just um, be as simple as I'm looking for a gift for, for an 80 year old. You know, that that, that might be and um, we're not talking sort of we're talking first world problems here. We're talking about consumer problems um, that, that they need answering or they might need to, um, if I use the photo boards um, brand as an example, that cold prospect might know that they just need to take better photos for their business. And that might be where, where it finishes. So you can imagine this, the message that we put out to that customer is going to be different to the message we put out to the warm prospect. So the warm prospect, they know they have the problem and they know there's a solution out there. So the warm prospect um, in the photo balls example would know that they want to take better photos and that they've heard that there's um, backdrops that look like pieces of wood uh, and that they could use instead of having to source a heavy piece of wood. So that they kind of that warm prospect, they know um, they're kind of warmed up to the idea that this is the kind of product that they need. So think about this as I'm as I'm explaining this, think about what a cold prospect is to you, what, what typically your um, prospect would, the, the problem that they would have. Maybe they're just looking for a gift. Maybe they're looking for your product that, that solves a solution. Maybe they're just looking for a haircut and they um, they don't know that uh, like the warm prospect knows that uh, salons have this special new cream that they're stocking. I don't know. <laughs> I'm making this up. I'm not, I know nothing about the hairdressing industry and haven't been to a hairdresser in about eight years. So, um, so the warm prospect is somebody that knows they have a problem and knows that there's a solution out there. And the hot prospect knows all about you and your brand, and they're possibly part of your tribe already. So you can imagine whenever you write a headline, imagine these three people, imagine these three smiley faces and my smiley face when, when you're next writing a headline um, or putting anything out there, an advert or anything. Think about what am I reaching here? Is this going out to my database, my email database? In which case they're hot prospects. They know about you. They know about your business. It's a different kind of message. So you might be saying, hey, come back to photo boards. We noticed you haven't purchased in a while. Um, did you know that we're up to this this week? We're planting trees. And, you know, tell them a story as well. Um, or if it's cold, did you know that um, when you take better photos for your business, you can improve your sales? That's the story you might be telling to the cold prospect. So hopefully you can get where I'm coming from here. And the effect that this has on your magnet story and offer. So if we imagine that we have the story is amazing and and I'm I'm really buying into your story. Imagine again, I'm I'm your perfect customer and I'm buying into your story. I love your story. Like with the Hyatt Denim, I'm going, oh, this is amazing. And let's say that the website is really easy to use. It has everything I need there. So the offering is lovely. I love the packaging. It'll be perfect for this, that, or the other. You know, imagine that you've got the offering nailed as well. You can imagine that the, the, the link between you and I, between me making that purchase, is not going to happen if you're not speaking to me in the right in the right way. I don't mean being polite. I mean, being kind of like um, relevant. Um, so if your magnet, the thing that you're putting out there, the stories that your customers are telling, if they're all bad reviews, not much of a magnet, if you're... Um, telling a, a story that isn't aligned with someone's values that that's that's not going to be right either so those magnets that the way that you're marketing if the photos don't represent the beautiful product for example again that magnet is going to fall down and the whole process will fall down similarly if the story is not right if if someone is hooked in and sees a really beautiful product photo of your product and it's a great representation or they they see a, a great um, headline that speaks to them in an advert or in an email or whatever um, and then they come to you and 
your values aren't aligned or your um the, the story that you're telling about your product oh it isn't right for me that then then that's that's not a connection we need to make sure that all of these three are great connections so that's where that that connection would fall down if your store is not right and if your offering is not right the same thing again um so we, you could pull somebody in and say, hey, come and look at this amazing thing and tell them a great story about how your product can help them. But then um, if they come to your website and it's really clunky and they can't find if you deliver to their country and you can't find the shipping information and um, and you're struggling to check out and you can't continue shopping. And there's all these kind of ways that our websites fall down and, and so many easy ways as well. And trust me. This is something that you'll want to focus on more than just the output and the shouting um, that you might be doing now, because when you focus on um, on social um, on social media and just driving traffic to a website that then doesn't convert, if you make a small change, and I made one small change on the photo boards website once that increased sales by 10% because we were missing, we'd updated a theme. We were using Shopify, we'd updated the theme for the for the Shopify website and had realized that a very crucial button, which is the continue shopping button from the shopping cart, was missing. And we hadn't spotted it. And so we were going, we were still getting sales, but nowhere near as many sales because of course people were frustrated. They were getting to that stage. And luckily it was only like that for, for a matter of days. But we we were then able to boost sales and go, wow, we, you know, we've really pulled that back because no wonder people weren't checking out no wonder our sales dropped because this was frustrating so there's so many little things to look at on your website to make sure that it's usable to make sure that it's um uh giving people that lovely um journey and experience that that, that they expect so there's a lot there to think of but um what i'm going to show you now when you've got all three aligned like this it's great um i just want you to these takeaways if you can just take these key takeaways from today it's to create headlines with curiosity always think how can I, rather than just saying 10% off, how can I tell a story or say, um, add curiosity and, and maybe just take an example, rewrite your last headline, but add curiosity to it. Consider how you communicate with those cold, warm, hot prospects, the different message that you send out to each. Choose stories over offers every time. People will open an email or click on a social post that has a story to tell rather than just saying another 20% off, another 20. Because if you do that, people will just expect that you'll do that down the line anyway. So you can add value rather than having to slash your prices we cover a lot of this um in fact in my current july workshop i do monthly workshops um for subscribers and that's the offer that i've uh, that they, carlos i think uh, now shared with you um <laughs> oh and thank you robert for sharing the 10 most expensive necklaces i'll be looking at that link um <laughs> is there one for five million who knows um and uh, simplify your customer journey and that that's part of making sure that the offering is not just your product it's not just making sure it's priced well and, and the whole offering it's that you're adding value that you're adding your expertise and that you're making it a really lovely simplified journey for the customer as well get all those right you'll get all those hearts in order you'll get everything um aligned and make sure that your your sort of your your perfect customer will be able to reach you if they're not if they're falling down in any of those going I don't like that price I don't like this website I don't like that story then they're not your perfect customer they're not part of your tribe they're not going to shout about your business so don't worry about them there's plenty of people who come along for the ride okay but we're targeting our perfect customer if you are interested in learning more I do offer group coaching sessions and also the founder membership which is something that I'm really excited to have just launched which is what um, we've shared the link for today which is a which is crazy offer at the moment that we're including my art of natural lighting e-course because I do still teach photography so we're including that for free with people who sign up for the founder membership I think we've shared a, a 49 pounds um sort of annual membership offer there so um well worth doing even if you just sign up for that um to get the the photography e-course thrown in for free um, but this is a monthly offering that I do each month. Um, so it's it's an exciting new thing. And if you sign up now, you'll see the um, the art of promos and pricing was the, the July workshop. Um, and then it'll be changing to a new workshop at the start of each month if you're interested in learning more. But um, I'm open to questions now if we've got time and um, try to nail it on time here. Um, but let me just get my headphones so I can hear you. Manage to drop those on the floor. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. Thank you, Lizzie, for another great presentation. It has been amazing to hear it. 
And we have some questions. The first one would be like, in your experience, what are like some quick wins when it comes to building a loyal tribe of customers? Uh, the, oh, sorry, I'm just stretching on my headphones. <laughs> um, so the quick wins, um, it's, it's difficult when you say quick wins. We, we all want those quick wins, don't we? Um, but if you... Um, if you communicate, if you put out um, assets, as I call them, um, and that you know today is an example, and and I, I know um, not everyone is is kind of marketing themselves like I am as a as a sort of a, an expert and a coach. Um, but even if you um, go, going back actually to to the example that Catherine shared with the. Um, the head, um, somebody who shared a, a, an article, they wrote an article for their blog on, on moles or something. <laughs> and, um, and, and that again is an example of how you can, um, get your knowledge, your added value. And so quick wins when it comes to building, building a tribe doesn't happen overnight. Um, but you can certainly attract people when you put information out there that they're interested in, in reading and absorbing. And so I refer to these as assets because they will stay there then. And so if you write a blog post, um, social posts, I always refer to um, social media as uh, the analogy that I, like, uh, that I use is, um, is like crafting a beautiful little paper boat okay I always use analogies in my teaching because I just help it it finds um uh, people find it so much more useful to visualize um so if you imagine you're crafting a beautiful paper boat and you're setting it on sail down a huge river that is how I see your social media post um that you've crafted something really beautiful and and off it goes but then it's gone I mean we're not going to be looking at that in a year's time unless somebody actually goes onto your grid onto your Facebook page and scrolls back that social post is long gone so you've spent a lot of time crafting something really special and then it's just kind of sailed on down the river not only that it's sailed on down a river with a million other paper boats and you're relying on somebody being on that riverbank standing there on that riverbank at the time that your boat happens to sail on by <laughs> okay so this is a huge aspect right but if you can um so your um your, your marketing efforts if they're just sailing on down a river with everyone else's marketing efforts you can see that you've got to craft a really beautiful little boat right to stand out and to attract somebody over to your brand if you want a quick win um that, that doesn't involve social media it, it possibly takes the same amount of time if you think of your time which is our most valuable resource if you think of your time as um spent writing a blog and people might think well blogs are you know blogs are, <laughs> are old hat kind of thing but if you create something that has your expertise your knowledge that might be hey, this beautiful wooden bowl looks beautiful with these things. You know, it, it's it's putting what you're good at with your business onto paper, onto writing. That is so much more valuable because that's going to stick around. That can be positioned on your website. Um, that can be, um, yes, shared on social media forever and eternity. So it gives you plenty of free little boats to craft and send down the river, um, but it's there. And so I think creating assets for me, I think is, is a huge um, opportunity to gather a tribe quite quickly um it's something that that yeah i i've kind of was keen on with with the brands that i created um and found that when you could share some knowledge that people can share um that that yeah it, it helps helps them come back for more thank you that's very helpful and we just received a lovely comment from claudia she says this is one of the most inspiring talks i have seen in a while it's oh that's lovely thank you claudia it's lovely to listen to someone who really seems to get the struggles of being a small micro business. It's such a challenge in a world of retailers. Oh, it absolutely is. And, and and I think the experience here is because I'm coming from both sides. And that's um with when I was a photographer, um, I I then found myself on location charging a lot of money to retailers and created a whole business from then teaching retailers how to craft their own um photos because you know when you're there and you're working alongside and and I've been a retailer myself bear in mind so um even when I was a freelance photographer back in you know the early noughties I then started a gift shop I had a coffee house in a city center so I've been running retail alongside so I know the struggles from that side and then as a photographer I started saying to retailers you could do this yourself you know actually what you're looking to create here isn't the kind of thing you need a pro to do so I'd still do, go and do professional shoots for 
sort of larger brands and restaurants and things like that but for actual retailers who are or, or makers I, I mean I spent a lot of time working with Etsy and and teaching in fact I wrote the, the photography handbook for Etsy many years ago it may have been updated now but um but it, there's a, a lot of um skills that you can just say to you know when you, I think when you've been on both sides it's 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 easier to understand the struggles because I've been there. I've had those struggles myself and being a retailer and, and opening a huge, um, investing so much into a huge business to have that then shut down by the pandemic eight weeks later. I mean, I know that pain of furlough and 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 all of the things that we've had to go through as retailers. So um, I do think that helps. And and it's certainly it's shifted my perspective in terms of coaching now that I'm, I've shifted from um offering big expensive workshops to offering sort of a small kind of you can subscribe to this on a monthly basis to make it more um, accessible for cash flow because cash flow is is the biggest challenge for a small business so I've gone actually as a coach I need to to align this with the struggles um so yeah that's really lovely thank you Claudia for sharing that message Thank you, Lindsay. And just to wrap up, Tana is asking if can you explain a little bit more about what is included in your mini workshop? Oh, so we do. Um, it's it's a broadcast very similar today. In fact, um, the um the, the mini workshops are sort of a, a monthly um I'm just choosing a topic basically. So for the rest of the year, we've got one on um how to create seasonal product photos that will last you year round. So rather than having um product shots that have all kind of uh, very Christmas specific um, things in them as photo props, how to choose photo props that will allow you to, to use those photos again in spring and so on with, with different graphics around them. And and so it's it's recognising that these small workshops are just a, a kind of uh, uh, delivered very much like this in a webinar style, but um, live or or you can watch the pre uh, the, the um replay recording of them and um and it's just just like today me talking through spending an hour with you but also then I give people um pdf download worksheets so that they can actually I ask quite challenging questions but I think that those questions really give us the answers that's where we find the gold that we can then use in our marketing so um I might encourage someone to, to sit and work through a, a worksheet of um, new headlines for their next email marketing campaign and that's one of the workshops coming up so basically they just replace at the first of each month they'll be replacing uh, with the next workshop so the July workshop is currently live for anyone who signs up to the um to the subscription and then they'll see if they say sign up just for a month, which I think on the, the Enterprise Nation offer we've set at £12. So if you just start sign up for one month, then you'll get access to the July one. And then on the 1st of August, you'll see it flips to the new workshop and, and you can also get access to that one until until your membership expires. So it's just a nice way of um, offering workshops on different topics, on photography, on email marketing, um, only on things that I've got experience on. So I'm not going to cover SEO because I don't, you know, other than dabbling a bit with my with my own business, um, I'm I'm not you know going to be an expert in everything. Um, I'm just sharing experience that I um, knowledge that I actually have, um, just because I I want to um, yeah be able to to share that and say this worked for my business, this worked amazing for my business, this was shocking <laughs> business, you know. So it's just sharing that experience. Hopefully that explains how it works. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, thank you. Um, that's all the time that we have for now. But oh, okay. Thank you, Lindsay, and to everyone. It's been great. Thank you. We, we, we hope you found it this useful, but please do share your feedback with us using the link in the chat. We would love to know how we did and how we can improve. Be sure to sign up to more digital series workshops as well to continue with your learning. We, we will be sharing the recording and further resources in a follow-up email uh, this afternoon, and I have put like, the links to connect with Lindsay as well. And thank you again to our speakers, Katerina and Lindsay, today for sharing your wisdom with us. I hope everyone has a lovely afternoon. Thank Bye. you so much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.